how to master HTML? You might be thinking that this guy is crazy. Everyone knows HTML, right? But stick with me. And in this video, I want to share a few important grown-up tips for HTML regards to that HTML and DOM area with you and tell you how much you are missing out in your HTML basic learning. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So you cannot be discussing about what all of this is in depth or how you can learn it. You can check out the Codedam's full stack learning path. It's basically in the front end section at the top. But most of these things over here are important. At some point, you would need to understand them to have a better understanding of the front end tooling. All right, the first thing I think a lot of you guys miss out is on semantic tags plus SEO focused tags, right? So let's start with semantic tags first. So if you are one of those developers who use divs all the way, probably not a good idea in today's time because we have so many tags like section, main, aside etc which provide a lot more semantic meaning to things like screen readers for example for accessibility so you should at least try to make use of the section or a side section for a section aside for a sidebar thing main for some main content and you know all the semantic tags which are there these all are block tags so you would have to like see which one is blocked which one is not um but yeah seo focus tags when i say seo focus tag what i mean is using the correct h1 h2 h3 headings and the meta tags for description and the title of the page making sure you have the open graph tags enabled so that your html page works great on social media websites so having all the seo plus social media understanding like what these websites or what these search engines expect you to write in your html code is also an html understanding right a lot of people don't know about open graph tags for example which is used by twitter facebook pretty much all social media websites when you share that link and that preview appears right this title this description and this image over here when you write something on social media so that's open graph tags when you are writing with h1 google considers that as your heading of the page one of the headings right their most important heading should be h1 and h2 then h3 and so on in that order so having this semantic understanding plus seo focus understanding of tags in html is an important concept the second focus should be on performance somehow so when i say performance what i mean is concepts like preloading and prefetching. So if you don't know about what preloading and prefetching are, these are some techniques to actually load some of the resources which you're sure that you would need eventually on the start of your web page when the web page just starts downloading, the HTML starts downloading. So these are like some performance hacks which a lot of frameworks use these days, Next.js, Remax, these frameworks like use it out of the box, right? So preloading the assets by default, prefetching them so that when you click on something, you don't have to wait for that page to be, you know, downloaded from the end server. You already have that in the browser cache. So preloading, prefetching are a couple of techniques for speeding up your things. And these are done through link tags. There is no JavaScript or anything involved, although you can do some preloading with JS as well. But link tags are used for preloading and prefetching. Similarly, placements of script tag, for example, is also important which one you want to choose async or defer and where you should put it below body that's like an important point so that you don't block the rendering of the main page and so on so having these performance things which you can do with the html page itself is also one thing which i think you should spend some time in look for how preloading prefetching works look for css content visibility it's also like a new attribute now we are go getting a little bit into html and css so these are a few hacks and a few techniques which are very easy to learn and gives you massive performance boost benefits but a lot of people don't know about my third tip is around things like document object model and the shadow dom which is also becoming very popular especially with our number five thing which we will discuss so hold on to that. But DOM and Shadow DOM, these are like two, three concepts which are constructed out of your HTML document. So the HTML document is taken by the browser and it's constructed into a DOM, which is nothing more than an API, a, a kind of like there's an API surface over here, which is exposed to CSS and another API is exposed to JavaScript. And this DOM is the actual thing 
which the user sees on the page, not the original HTML, the DOM which is constructed. And this is like a tree of all your nodes and tags and values and this and that. So know about how DOM works really with these JavaScript and CSS world. What are the APIs and JavaScript as document? In CSS, you have tag selectors and properties and keys and values. And know a little bit about what Shadow DOM is also. We're gonna discuss Shadow DOM in number five, like I said, but Shadow DOM is a part of DOM, which allows you to do some interesting things. So know a little bit more about DOM. It's not much about HTML, but compared to how HTML really works with JavaScript and CSS. My next thing for you is actually talking a bit about forms and data validation. You wouldn't know so many people don't really know about how to use data validation in HTML5 forms itself. You probably don't need that 20 KB jQuery library or something to do validation with HTML forms because now this is like very, very simple. You have to learn about the required attribute. You have to learn about how you can restrict the length of an input with max length, min length attribute. You can learn about how to restrict a particular format to a regular expression value, restrict the amount of the type of files which are being uploaded. And all of this is just done in HTML. I'm not talking about JavaScript over here. This is done in HTML itself. You can, I mean, I don't know the number of people I have seen which write a JavaScript code to have an input field, which when pressed on enter should do something, right? If you have written on key down an e.key code or e.something is enter, then do that. I mean, you just have to wrap this inside a form with on summit and you are done, right? Whenever somebody writes in this input field and hits enter, if there's a button or heck, if there is not a button as well, this on summit function would be called, right? And if you want to take it one more step further, just like Remix does, Remix and its framework, you can also work with form action and form method and stuff like this. But for the most part, I do believe like a lot of validation and a lot of processing the form information is not a lot more accessible to people, especially with the frameworks like React and Vue and this and that, giving you all sorts of JavaScript powers within your HTML view that is obscured away that this functionality and this stuff is already available in HTML. And the fifth and the final thing which I want to discuss, you should know as an HTML developer, is the concept of web components. Now, web components is not a relatively new technology. It's just that it hasn't taken off that much, but that doesn't mean that it's not relevant. It's very relevant and it allows you to write reusable components with the help of HTML, CSS and JavaScript itself. And these are just like components you would hear in React or Vue or anything, but these are like standardized components for the web. They are reusable and they use something known as Shadow DOM, which we briefly discussed in the third point when we're learning about DOM and Shadow DOM. So what Shadow DOM essentially is, is you can think of as a private part of a DOM tree, right? So what do I mean by that? If you have an HTML document which is constructed, you can have a Shadow DOM of this particular, in this particular area where the CSS, for example, you're writing for the HTML you're writing it for is scoped, right? Just like you have CSS modules in React, if you have seen that, which is scoped to a particular module, Shadow DOM also allows you to have a, a region like that. But of course, it's it's more powerful and has a bunch of more features than that. But yeah, I mean, learning about web components, how to create your own web components, publish them online, use them in different applications is also something you should know about as an HTML developer because Sooner or later, if any one framework adds support for generic web components, it'll be, you know, it'll be, you'll be seeing a lot more usage of that. So these were my five tips on how to master HTML. If you know some important tips which I have missed and I have a couple of them in mind, I'll write them down in the comments myself. But if you know about a few things which you have learned in HTML and you think are important, leave a comment down below for others to learn with you. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.